So a lot of people are stuck in what we call a sympathetic imbalance, where the autonomic nervous system that runs a lot of the show behind the curtains is stuck in its sympathetic fight or flight response, and it's having a hard time moving into that parasympathetic rest and digest situation. And both of these states are appropriate. We really do need that sympathetic response if we're presented with a stress. If we're being chased by a lion, we want the body to be able to move into that fight or flight response, changes the way that it operates to optimize for our ability to survive. Shut up, phone. I'm talking about stress right now. That wasn't real helpful, but if someone is stuck in a fight or flight state, they can really, they can fly off the handle like that a lot easier. It can also restrict proper digestive function because we need to be able to move into that parasympathetic rest and digest state to be able to digest correctly. So in this video, I'm going to help you understand steps you can take to improve a sympathetic fight or flight imbalance. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So it was over on our Understanding a Sympathetic Imbalance video that Sarah asked, I read the book and I see two areas that the sympathetic nervous system is mentioned, but they both list symptoms and testing tools, but I don't see the solutions and supplements. Can you please do a video on solutions and supplements? I also have low blood pressure, so I'm guessing increasing minerals and stabilizing blood sugar will help, but what else? Thanks in advance. So Sarah is saying that she read my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, and we talk about how to do simple self-tests at home using tools you can pick up at a pharmacy or a health food store to get an idea of some imbalances that could be creating trouble in the body. And if you haven't read that book, I'll put a link to the Kick Your Fat in the Nuts book in the description below so you can get the whole thing totally for free, and it'll kind of walk you through how to look at this autonomic nervous system as well as some other imbalances that can create a lot of health trouble. But when we're looking at this sympathetic fight or flight state being, you know, dominant in the body, then we really want to kind of look at what is creating the stress that's pushing the body into this stressed state. And that stress can come from your life. Maybe your boss is a jerk. Maybe that can be creating a lot of stress or some other situation is creating stress in your life. And that can push a body into that sympathetic fight or flight state. But also, there could be stress inside the body that's pushing the body into that fight or flight state. So you might not really have a lot of stress in your life. And the stress is coming from your body dealing with some type of situation that's causing it to be in this stress state. And when we're looking at this uh, sympathetic imbalance, with most people, we're going to see that they're going to have high blood pressure. Um, but there are also some circumstances that we'll talk about in this video where we'll see it with low blood pressure. And, you know, Sarah was right when she's talking about I probably need to lift my minerals because when blood pressure is low, that can be an indication that there's really not enough minerals for all the body to function correctly, but there's also not enough nutrients, and the body's kind of stressing out. It would be like you trying to pay $800 worth of bills with 12 bucks. That's a big stress to you. So it's a big stress to the body to run all of these functions that it needs to run without having all the resources it needs to run those correctly. So if someone has really low blood pressure, that has the ability to raise some stress hormones in the body and can push the body into a bit of a more fight or flight state. Does that make sense? And yeah, Sarah's right when she's saying maybe I need to stabilize my blood sugar because if someone is having blood sugar spikes and crashes where the blood sugar is dipping too low, that can really stress the body out too because when blood sugar dips too low, if a person doesn't have enough minerals to buffer that blood sugar going too low, it can really push the body into a stress state. So stabilizing blood sugar can be very important if you're having hypoglycemic type reactions to carbohydrates. We'll put a link to in the description below this video for our video on improving hypoglycemia, and that can be really important. So taking the steps to stabilize blood sugar can be crucial if you're having crashes, but also if your blood sugar is going too high. And if you're leaning too insulin resistant and it's causing the body to have an inability to really process that glucose correctly, that makes it so it can't really utilize that glucose. So it's taking away a fuel source from the body 
and that can really stress the body out and push it into that fight or flight state as well. So the blood sugar stabilization can be a very big part of this. But I kind of wanted to show you this formula that we look at. And these are just some markers that we look at when we're trying to figure out if someone is leaning too far on the parasympathetic side, which that has the ability to create a lot of symptoms and health issues as well. Or if someone is stuck in this sympathetic fight or flight state like we're talking about in, in this video. And one thing I want to mention when we're looking at these markers here, we see that we see asthma a lot with a parasympathetic imbalance. So somebody's overly parasympathetic, we see asthma with those individuals a lot. So one really important rule that we have is that we never treat an asthmatic like they have a sympathetic imbalance. In other words, we never take somebody with asthma and try to improve what's viewed as a sympathetic imbalance. Like maybe they think, oh, I'm dealing with a sympathetic imbalance, but they have asthma too. You never want to push a person who has asthma more into that parasympathetic state because it has the ability to magnify asthma. So that's just an important rule that we look at when we're looking at these markers. So the first thing that we look at is blood pressure. And like I mentioned, most people that we see stuck in this sympathetic state are dealing with high blood pressure. And this formula that we look at, we basically look at somebody's blood pressure and we take that systolic number, which is the top number, and then we subtract the diastolic number. And the result of that is what we call a pulse pressure. So if someone had high blood pressure, maybe their blood pressure was like 150 over 90, then when you did that formula, that pulse pressure would be 60. So anything greater than 46 for a pulse pressure is something that we consider to be a, a marker for leaning too far on that sympathetic side. Again, these are not diagnostic things. You're not going to look at your blood pressure and diagnose a sympathetic imbalance. These are just markers that we use to get a picture of how the body is likely operating and problems that are probably going on. So you can see that when someone's blood pressure is really high, it's often going to make their pulse pressure high and be a marker for this sympathetic imbalance. But we also take it a step further and we divide that pulse pressure by their breath rate. And the breath rate is just the rate at which you breathe when you're relaxed and, and normally breathing. So we have people check the number of inhales that they make in a 60 second period and that is their breath rate. So there's some circumstances where this breath rate can help us see if someone's really leaning too far on that sympathetic side. So for example, if someone had really low blood pressure, say their blood pressure was like 100 over 70, that's, that's pretty low. But when you look at that formula of the systolic minus the diastolic in that scenario, then that pulse pressure is only 30. So we can see, well, that's really leaning more on the parasympathetic side actually, because it's lower than 37. But when you divide the breath rate, say this individual's breath rate is like 7, which is very low. When you divide 30 by 7, you get 4.2. So 4.2 is a lot higher than 3. And that's what we're looking at in this breath rate. We want the breath rate to be between 2 and 3. And that's what we're looking at with this resultant here in this part of the formula is we really want that to be between 2 and 3. So if someone's breath rate is really low, and now this resultant over here is 4.2, that's going to be a lot higher than 3 and a really strong marker of a sympathetic imbalance. So this is actually really common. When that breath rate is lower than like 12 or 13, that's a strong indication that the blood is leaning too alkaline and that oxygen can't get down to the tissues where it needs to be for the body to be able to use that oxygen correctly. So when that can't happen, that's really going to push the body into a stress state. It can't use oxygen correctly. That's a significant problem. So that can push a person into this sympathetic state. So when we're looking at steps to improve this imbalance and we're looking at supplements, a lot of times it's really about correcting the problem. It's either causing that blood pressure to go too high um, or causing that breath rate to go too low when it's a low blood pressure individual. Um, and, and, you know, these scenarios can be mixed and matched, and you really got to look at the person to understand what's happening. But there's a variety of issues that can push a person into this sympathetic state, and those seem to be the most common. Either blood pressure going too high and making that pulse pressure too high, or the breath rate being very low so that when they do this formula where they divide the breath rate 
into that pulse pressure, then that number is going to go too high. So if someone's blood pressure was 12 and you divided that into a pulse pressure of 30 here, then that's only two and a half and all of a sudden everything is fine. So we kind of view it like, well, when that breath rate is really low, if we can help them raise that, then that's going to help the body use oxygen correctly and pull the body out of that sympathetic, overly stressed state. So, you know, Sarah was asking, and I'm not giving Sarah advice here because I don't know her, I don't know her situation, but if she's saying her blood pressure is low, she would want to look at her breath rate. And if your breath rate is lower than like 12 or 13, taking steps to improve that scenario can help the body use oxygen better, and that can help the body a whole lot. So we'll put a link in the description below this video for our video on improving oxygen utilization, and that'll walk you through some steps you can do to improve and raise that breath rate so the body can use oxygen better. So this is a little bit more of a complicated topic, which is why we didn't put that in the book. It can be a little bit hard to really, you really want to be able to talk somebody through this like we're doing here. And I'm still probably confusing a lot of people with what we're looking at. But when we're talking about supplements to improve a sympathetic imbalance, you know, there are things that we use, like if somebody's blood pressure is high, we use a lot of vitamin E based things like tocotrienols. But, you know, those are things that lower blood pressure. That's why it's helping that imbalance when the blood pressure is high. Taurine is another thing we use that can help lower blood pressure. Um, a lot of those scenarios where blood pressure is too high and the person's in a sympathetic imbalance will take steps to improve bile flow. Um, making sure that bile is flowing correctly is very important to help the body detox the way that it wants to detox. And if it can't detox, a lot of that filth and junk accumulates in the system and can thicken up the blood and raise the blood pressure. So improving bile flow can be very important to improve a sympathetic imbalance when that blood pressure is high. And we'll put a link in the description below for our video on five steps to improve bile flow if that's a scenario that you need to look through. And if blood pressure is low and somebody's leaning too sympathetic, there's an amino acid called methionine that can be really beneficial and helpful. Um, but this is also a pro-catabolic amino acid. So if you don't understand what that means, you really want to read that book that I told you how to get for free in the description below so you can figure out, am I already leaning too far on that catabolic side? Because if I am, methionine could magnify that imbalance while I'm trying to fix another imbalance. So you really want to know where your body chemistry is to have an, have an understanding of what supplements are going to be most beneficial for you. It's really not about taking the right supplement for the symptom that you're dealing with. It's about learning how to work with your body chemistry instead of against it. And again, if, if blood pressure is low and the breath rate is low, then often it's really about raising that breath rate to take the body out of that sympathetic stress state. So you're really going to have to do some work here looking at your body chemistry to get an idea of where you are and the steps that are going to help you the most. And if you hate to read, we also have a free digestion course that kind of walks you through running those same self-tests and understanding those imbalances as well. And we'll put the link to that free digestion course in the description below this video as well. So I hope that helps to understand this a little bit more. You might want to jump over right now and check out our video on understanding a sympathetic imbalance to kind of walk through some of these things a little bit more and that repetition will help you understand kind of what you need to do to correct this issue. I hope that helps.